Hey everybody, Matumbo here. Welcome back to the channel. And today we are playing some more Historic here on Magic Arena. And we have a really cool deck today uh, for our next installment of Deck Timber. Uh, this deck is brought to us by Habeas Porpoise. So a huge shout out to them for supplying this deck. And real quick though, if you're not familiar with Deck Timber, you know, we've been going over it uh, in every video, but I want to make sure anybody new uh, is familiar with what we're doing is I am saying thank you to each and every one of you for, you know, becoming a part of this uh, family and this community and um, just giving me a huge, you know, welcome to YouTube. Um, so I am playing viewer submitted decks all throughout the month of December. We're calling it Deck Timber. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play your deck as is. And then after a few games of your deck, I'm going to make some changes, maybe try to improve upon it or maybe see if we can uh, get the draws to be more consistent or just improve upon your idea. And then we're going to play and then I'm going to play a few games of it. And then we're just going to see how the deck does overall. And we're going to and I'm going to talk about, you know, everything overall and and how it did and maybe maybe some potential changes we should have looked at. But uh, that is Deck Timber. And uh, if you want to be considered for Deck Timber, there's still time. Please join the Discord. The link is down below. Find the Deck Timber channel and uh, look in there and look for the template at the top uh, for how you can submit your deck for Deck Timber. But yeah, with that being said, you know, um, always just want to remind everybody, if you enjoy everything, uh, all I ask is that you like, comment and subscribe. Just do all the things. Check out the links down below. But let's hop into this deck. We are calling it Iron Giant or our friend Habeas Porpoise is calling it Iron Giant. So this is the colorless shell of a deck that, you know, is pretty popular. Obviously a few tweaks and changes in here. And this is, uh, it's got some red in it. So Habeas uh, Porpoise said that they wanted to try to make a Tron deck that didn't rely on Planeswalkers. Hence, no Planeswalkers being in here, you know, no Karns, no Ugins, nothing like that. Um, but, they were going for, you know, Metalwork Colossus with the Chroma's Memorial as the win condition, which is great because if you can get out an early Chroma's Memorial, that means Metalwork Colossus is probably going to be free. And at that point, uh, a Chroma's Memorial says creatures you control have flying, first strike, vigilance, trample, haste, and protection from black and red. That is a lot of abilities, but hey, a free first striking, trampling, haste creature, and that's good. And why is it free? Well, that's because Metalwork Colossus, this 11 mana 10-10, it costs X less to cast, where X is the total converted mana cost of non-creature artifacts you control. So what we're going to be doing, we're just going to be doing what the colorless decks do. We're going to ramp. We're going to play four copies of Mind Stone, four copies of Guardian Idol. Um, we're going to ramp these, these ramp spells into more ramp in the form of either Chromatic Lantern. That's going to turn all of our lands into tap for any color. Or this Hedron Archive, which is going to add an additional two uh, colorless mana. And then on top of that, even more ramp in the form of Forsaken Monument, which is going to uh, give all of our colorless creatures plus two, plus two. But it says whenever you tap a permanent for colorless, add an additional colorless. And then whenever you cast a colorless spell, gain two life. So we're just going to ramp, 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 ramp. And then this Metalwork Loss is just going to be zero mana to cast. And he's going to hopefully have all of these crazy abilities. Um, but what else can we do in this deck? Well, we have card draw in the form of Maze Mind Tome. Um, we have Golos. Golos is always a fun card. Uh, five mana colorless. Um, it's a three five. When it comes into play, go get any land out of your deck and put it on the battlefield tapped. And for seven mana, so two colorless and one of each, exile the top three cards of your library, and then you can cast them this turn without paying their mana cost. So we have the ability to tap for any color mana thanks to the Chromatic Lantern, but then we also have the lands that Golos can go get in the form of Cascading Cataracts, which says for five colorless and tap this, we get to add five color um, or five mana in any combinations of colors. So we can add one of each mana. This, this land potentially makes it so we have to tap eight mana for the Golos' ability instead of seven. Uh, or if we just have Chromatic Lantern out, it's going to be a lot easier to do. Um, but yeah, that's going to be crazy, crazy good. And since we're not playing any Planeswalkers in this version of the deck, we are able to play the Immortal Sun. It's a six mana. This is pretty much a, a, a control card. This players can't activate Planeswalkers loyalty abilities, so they can't use their Planeswalkers. If they have passive abilities, they'll still be able to, you know, get the benefits from those passive abilities. But this also says at the beginning of your draw step, draw an additional card. It's going to say our spells cost one less to cast and creatures we control get plus one plus one so yeah that is pretty impressive for a six mana spell and then one of our favorite cards good old combustible gear hulk 
Uh, six mana, six, six with first strike. Already ridiculous stats. But it says whenever it enters the battlefield, target opponent may have you draw three cards. If the player doesn't, you mill three cards. Then Combustible Gear Hulk deals damage to that player equal to the mana cost, uh, the total mana cost of those cards. So basically, we get to either draw three cards or we mill three cards, and they're going to hopefully take a bunch of damage because all of our cards are super expensive. We have 11 drops, 7 drops, 6 drops, 5 drops. So if they if we hit any combination of three of these, they're probably going to be dead. And that is going to be a lot of fun. If we're able to pull that off, I'm hoping that we can pull this off. Anytime I see Combustible Gear Hulk in a deck, I make sure that our deck is filled with, you know, tons of expensive cards. But... We didn't have a choice. We don't have a say in the matter this time because this deck is all habeas, cor uh, habeas porpoise. Um, so yes. So again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, habeas for submitting this deck. This deck looks sweet. I am super excited to be playing this deck because again, I love playing big red stuff. Uh, and then the colorless shell is super broken. It's, yeah, it's kind of frustrating to play against sometimes, but again, when we are on the giving end and not the receiving end, this this type of deck is fun and you know i'm sorry you know it's like the goblin people probably say the same thing oh it's it's fun when you play goblins not when you play against goblins but i guess you know what the things that you like to do are the things that you like to do because you like to do them so and again playing big dumb things and magic is one of the things that we enjoy so again i can't say thank you enough to habeas porpoise for submitting this and again if you want to be part of deck timber all you have to do is join the discord head down to the deck timber channel Get the template from the pin post and submit your list. There's still time. You could be tomorrow's deck for all you know. We pull a random deck that's submitted every day. So please, please, please join and get your decks and get your decks listed in there. And uh, again, thank you so much. We're going to hop into the gameplay. So we're going to play a few games with this and we'll see you guys at the tune up. All right. The Iron Giant deck. Curious how this is going to play out with no Planeswalkers of our own. But Habeas Porpoise, we're going to we're going to do it. And uh, we have the ultimate uh, opponent in the first game. Can we beat Thanos? I don't know. We're going to keep this, I guess. Maybe they're playing land destruction and try to try to blow up our land. All right. Good deal. Good deal. Um, three, seven. Actually, don't hate this. Green white. Hmm. I'm a little intrigued. So Yeah, I think we're gonna put this to the bottom now. I do think we want lands now more than anything with them ramping. I guess our best draw is just a land. Fell at our retreat. All right, let's just let's just get a land and be done with this, right? Okay. I do have a feeling we're probably going to see like uh, Elspeth Conquers Death here. Oh! Anointed Procession. They're going to make all of the 2-2s. Two two Interesting.
Interesting. So this is mana neutral, or not, this is mana neutral. Um, yeah. So we could. What are we doing? He's taking damage. How much damage are you going to take? Okay. I uh, don't actually want that. <laughs> All right, so what is our best draw? I think... I think we go get a Golos and then act... Do we have enough mana? Okay, so we're at 29. We take If we take 9 here, we go down to 20, so not... Not a huge deal. This is probably like a removal. Yep, Banishing Light, as expected. It's going to get rid of the Gear Hulk. Oh, and we just drew Golos. Oh, that's a uh, that's a pretty fortunate draw. Yeah, that's a pretty fortunate draw right there. Seems pretty good. Pro red, pro black. Uh, haste. Yep, that was uh, <laughs> that was the hit right there. Oh, that was the hit. Oh my! What a hit! What a board state we have, right? Holy schmoly. Cultivate, all right. Are these going to be three threes or are we going to have uh, more two twos? More two twos. All right. Okay. I'm guessing we're about to have a lot of two twos. I mean, so this goes and gets our big ol' 1111. And it's 1111 because of this. Costs zero mana. Seems pretty good. Let's just activate Golos to 
Activate Golos. Holy 11. Oh, and 13-13. Thir thirteen, thirteen. Yep. Thanos, you must not have had all of the stones. Ah, uh, but we, with all the rocks we had, I'm pretty sure we assembled all the stones there. All right, let's 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 head into the next game. That was pretty sweet. <laughs> all right, game two. We hydrate. All right. Let's do it to it. Is this a keeper? Is this a keeper? I think it is. We get to scry. We get to play one of our many two drops next turn. Definitely going to keep that. That gives us access to all the mana. All right. Lotus Cobra. All right, what are you doing over there, Cole Fricks? Okay. Five color shenanigans. I feel like I'm a little happier that this that this fetch lane came out this turn than next turn. Oh, maybe not. They'll come to play tapped, so they'll get four land. Interesting. That is a that's a crazy turn right there. Crazy turn. One, two, three, four, five. Let's see, two, three. So we can Hedron Archive. Into Golos. Just double checking my math. Making sure my math is not incorrect. All right, let's see what happens. I feel I feel like their turn's going to be a little bit better than ours, right? Okay, so they don't have like a crazy Genesis ultimatum or something here. All right, not what I was expecting. All right, what are we what are we hitting? Forsaken Monument. That seems pretty good. I mean, we're going to play this just to gain the life. Uh, no attacks. I do like where we're at. I'm very surprised that la their last turn only resulted in an Ashaya. Can we activate Golos twice next turn? Two, four, six, eight, fourteen, sixteen. I think we're two man off, one man off. No, that might be. I think this is right. Bonders on Clave is pretty good. So I want to do. Well, 
That was just a little, a little eh. We are gaining plenty of life. I do kind of wish that we had an Aether Flux Reservoir in our deck. Let's draw a card. Uh, no attacks. So we're going to try to do what we did last turn. All right, 29. You got us good. All right, so I think they're doing uh, Operation Deck Thin. Operation Deck Thinning. We have quite the slew of artifacts in play. Uh, yep, yeah, no blocks. Do we draw this? No, we've got one. We've got one. Let's just draw Necroma's Memorial here, please. All right, so. Add, add. Let's do it. Well. We're not even in our main phase yet. Thirteen thirteen's pretty good. Another 13-13. Well, we're still searching. Still searching. Well, then Inventor's Fair next turn is going to pretty much seal the deal. Uh, do we attack with Golos? Nah. We'll just wait. They can't really attack with anything, I don't think, successfully. Azusa is not going to do anything. This is... Uh, this deck is doing it. All right, well, let's just see if we can do this the old fashioned way. I don't think we're actually going to do that. Oh man, we're just, we're just too greedy, right? We didn't hit it. We didn't hit it, so.
Let's just go in for the kill. Kulfrix, good game. Whew, the Iron Giants. They are... They are popping. This deck is sweet. Guys, this deck is sweet. All right. Mini boss time. Mini boss time. Predictions. Are we winning? Are we losing? Are we going to keep wrecking face here? I feel like the Iron Giant is just... I feel like this deck is just killing it. Again, though, these colorless shells are really powerful. All right, opponent, let's do this. Opponent goes first. We have a slow draw, so we will do what we are supposed to do and ship this back. A lot better. So I think T three. Yeah, I think we're supposed to send that back to have a I think we have to keep a payoff and a way to get to that payoff. I'm pretty sure our opponent's gonna be on like a blue white control deck. They have the Teferi avatar, along with just the boring old magic back. The, well, let me rephrase that to the classic magic back. Hey, look at that. All right, let the sensors begin, right? Oh. They're not just on a blue eye control. They're just on uh, the aggro deck. Okay, with no Lurises. Why no Luris? All right, so we're at 19. We do get to Forsaken Monument next turn into Metalwork Colossus. But we could be dead here, right? All right, so we're not dead. We're probably just going to take like nine. This is six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep. So many cards, oh my gosh. And you know we're dead next turn, right? They're gonna have the uh they're gonna have the flying card or unblockable. Oh, they always have it. I mean, they have a full grip of cards. The full grip. Okay. I mean, I'd rather them just end the game, right? Instead of playing with their food. Now it's too big for a Star of Extinction. OK, 
Okay. Is it even worth... I don't even know if it's worth doing this, right? Oh, okay. All right. All right, good game. If they play another enchantment, we're just going to concede. Oh, we're conceding. All right. You got us, you got us. Again, like I said, you don't have to play with your food. Just, uh, just to put it out of its misery. So, all right, good game. Let's talk about this deck. All right, let's talk about this deck. So, um, I mean, we went two and one. This deck is this deck is great. Um, obviously, it's going to have some problems with some of these uh, really fast aggro decks unless we get like a really, really, really good draw. Uh, you know, the perfect curve out into maybe possibly like a Star of Extinction or something along those lines. Um, but these these colorless shell decks, again, are super powerful. Um, they typically do get pretty good draws because they have eight two drops um, in the in the form of mana rocks. So, again, that's going to put us really far ahead of the curve, especially if we're able to follow a two drop on turn two into a Hedron Archive on turn three and then into potentially another two drop on top of that. So um, with the flavor of this deck being the Iron Giant, um, I do like I do like what we're seeing here with the uh, Metalwork Colossuses, uh, the Combustible Gear Hulk, um, and I even like the Star of Extinction, especially in, in combination with the Acromas Memorial because it gives our creatures protection from red. But um, so where I think this deck is uh, lacking a little bit, I feel like is going to be in the mana uh, as well as just some of the, the curve out cards. So uh, again, I understand why some of these cards are in here, but I, I do feel like if we were to go ahead and just go in here and fix some of these things, the deck could potentially get a little bit better, um, hopefully overall. Um, you know, can't promise you that, obviously, because we're only going to play a few games. But um, the one card I do think, and like I said, I do, I do understand why this card is in here, but I do think it makes our curve a little weird, is going to be the Chromatic Lantern. So... Um, you know, Chromatic Lantern, we typically want to play a two drop on turn two into the ideal Hedron Archive on turn four. And then Chromatic Lantern is a really cool backup plan, uh, you know, for Hedron Archive. If we don't get a Hedron Archive, at least we have a potential Chromatic Lantern, which actually turns off, turns on all of our red cards. But I do feel like if we were to just go in here and actually just fix the mana, uh, some of these lands... Uh, I, I do feel like we would not necessarily need the Chromatic Lantern in the deck. Um, I, but again, I do love the Combustible Gear Hulk, uh, especially with all of the expensive cards in this deck. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to try to focus on the Combustible Gear Hulk aspect of this deck. I, I may add a couple of Gear Hulks. I don't know if I'm going to go up to four or not. Uh, my initial, my initial, you know, being inside just says yes, go up to four Combustible Gear Hulks and let's try to kill them like that. That could be the true Iron Giant. Um, but, you know, we have medical, the Metalwork Colossus, which, again, is a giant. Uh, I mean, not not really a giant. It's a construct, but he is a giant, beefy 10-10. Um, and with Forsaken Monument and Immortal Sun out in play, um, he does become a 13-13. And flying first strike haste is pretty crazy with all that. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure about the Immortal Sun. Now, I understand Immortal Sun is in here to turn off Planeswalkers, but I don't know if we necessarily need the Immortal Sun. Uh, the Immortal Sun, yes, does give us extra draws, um, but it's just one of those really awkward payoff cards. So I think I would much rather land a Combustible Gear Hulk than I would an Immortal Sun. Um, you know, even if they can kill it and then they decide to just give us three cards or mill three cards, uh, I think overall um, that one that one turn with the combustible gear hulk um you know regardless of what it what it does i think it's just going to be better overall and then being able to starve extinction also i think is better than casting uh the immortal sun possibly in this deck we just have so many other ways to do things in this deck 
you know, we have Forsaken Monument to, to ramp our spells, which actually, or that's going to make our spells cheaper because our lands are going to double. Uh, Golos essentially gives us three extra cards a turn, um, you know, and then we have Mace Mine Tome and, Ar and Hedron Archives. So to, to draw extra cards anyway. So, and not even to mention the inventor's fair to go search whatever we want. So, um, yeah, we're just going to hop into our time machine. We're going to, we're going to toy around with this. There's a lot of fun things that I'm brewing in my head right now, and we're just going to see how we end up. So, all right, let's uh, hop in and we'll see you guys just in a few short seconds. All right. Through the magic of technology again, we are back with the iron giant version two and you know what we did we couldn't help ourselves we went up to the full four copies of combustible gear because it was screaming at us and it was saying play all of us play all of us so we are going to try it uh we did leave the starve extinctions in we left the acromas memorials in um and we added a couple ulamogs because we're on the combustible gear hulk plan so we need more expensive cards so i feel like yeah we're gonna put those in. So we swapped out the uh, two Immortal Suns for two Ulamogs, and we swapped out the three Chromatic Lanterns for three more Combustible Gear Hulks. So what we also did is we kind of cleaned up the mana. So um, what we're doing is we are gonna be playing three copies of Ether Hub. So this is gonna give us access to red mana. Um, Cascading Cataract still gives us access to red mana. Spire of Industry now also will give us access to red mana. Um, yes, at the cost of one life, but again, if we only have to use one of these to pop out a combustible gear hulk and only take one damage, potentially, um, that would be great, you know, in, in conjunction with an ether hub or something along those lines. But we also have four unclaimed territory. So unclaimed territory is kind of cool. So we don't get to really, um, use this for the, for the red mana towards star of extinction, but we do get to use this for the red mana with combustible gear hulk. Because Combustible Gear Hulk is a construct. Uh, I mean, Metalwork Colossus is a construct as well. Uh, unfortunately, Golos isn't a construct. But but hey, these are colorless creatures. So we don't really care about that. But we do have a red creature that is a construct that shares, you know, another creature type here. And this also just taps for colorless anyway. So this can double up with colorless with Fors uh, Forsaken Monument. So, but we do get to clean the red mana up with the unclaimed territory on constructs to uh, potentially get this out without having to take any damage. So uh, still the same number of land. We just really just cleaned up how our land looked. So we have basically half of our lands that produce just colorless. And then the other half, they actually produce either, either colorless or red mana, which is good. So this is going to give us all the red mana we need. Remember, we only have two star of extinctions in our deck, so it's not very dire that we have to focus on just to having something that makes red mana for our sorceries. So that's why I went the unclaimed territory uh, again for the combustible gear hulk and the spire of industry is really just more of a backup plan along with the ether hub. But uh, this is going to be the deck uh, Iron Giant version two, uh, habeas uh porpoise i hope you enjoy the changes that we made to this deck because we are about to get into them and we're gonna hopefully have a lot of fun so all right let's uh let's see how we do and uh we'll see you guys at the wrap up all right here we go let's do it i'm stoked i really want to get a combustible gear hulk kill that is that is my goal Again, also don't just, I also don't mind just uh, golosing into all the crazy things like we did in game one. Good Wolf Gone Rad. Welcome to the game. We get to go first, huh? Against the Luris deck? Like, always Luris on. Yeah, too bad Golos is a scout and not a construct, but it doesn't really doesn't really matter. All right, constructs. So we really, really, really need to hit a land here. One time deck. Oh. Thank you so much.
This is non-creature artifacts, right? Gain a little bit of life back. How much mana do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so I think we can actually get down all of our stuff except for Maze and Mind Tome. Let's get down a Cataract, and then let's play this beefy boy. All right, Luris, what are you going to do? All right. Ah, oh, so you're going to force us to take this, huh? All right. <clears throat> I guess we'll save that to the end, right? Oh, star of extinction. What are you going to do? Take 11. Take 11. Oh, we hit that bedevil. That was a good hit. So then we... Four. That's a twelve. So if we sack two of these, we get down to eight. Can't cast that. Okay. All right. So then they get to pump, and then they get to bedevil. Okay. Well, that's not how I would have played that, but. Goodbye, Golos. All right, let's, uh, do we have enough mana to put this out? One, two, three, four. I don't think we do. Oh, no, 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 no. I thought that was cast for... Never mind. So this is four. So one, two, three, four. Tap one, two, three, four, five. We don't. So we're just going to hold. We'll kill him. We'll kill him next turn. Do we do this as a sorcery? No, nope, we can do this at any time. All the card draw. So I'll probably do it again, I'm imagining. Sure. Take two for no reason. As soon as they see the card that we tutor for, they're gonna they're gonna scoop them up. Let's do it. Yep. 
Oh, 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 all the giants. This deck, this deck is already my favorite, right? Uh, this deck is sweet. All right, on to the next game. All right, so who is going to be our next opponent? And we wait. All right. This, uh... This hand, right? Can't keep this. We don't have any ramp. Um... I think we have to keep this and we have to put back an Ulamog. That way we play this, they don't know we're on a colorless deck. They're probably on red. Blue. Okay. Skitty, what are you doing? Oh, you're milling us. Holy. Holy millstone. Three land and a memorial. Interesting. Maybe they play like a drown secret here and then we can just top deck. Let's just, let's just, oh, we did top. Oh my God, I can't believe we just drew that. That's so sick. So sick. Give us back our Ulamog, please, deck. They did play Drown Secrets. Gain some life that's going to be irrelevant. We'll put that on top so that way they can mill it away for us. So we do have we do have the red mana we are always wanting. Okay. So they do have a blocker. Do we have enough mana? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, we do. So I think we're just going to get back this Acroma's Memorial, right? Fear my zero mana, 12 12 hasting, flying, trampling creature. Flying first strike, vigilance, trample, haste, pro black, pro red. Still could potentially just get milled out in one turn, which is. Are they saying good game?
Not enough. Not enough. I mean... They didn't play a land. If they would have played a land and passed, we would have gotten back the Colossuses, at least one of them, and gotten in for 24. But uh, yeah, so Akroma's Memorial and uh, the Giants, or the Colossi, pretty sick. Pretty sick. All right, on to the next game. All right, game number three, or six, how are you looking at it? Let's go. Opponent. We need you to sit down now. Thank you. Oh, this is a great name. Great name. I don't know why, but I like it. Good old Biscuit Joe. We're going to mull this. We don't have a two drop. Don't have a good two drop. We have a better two drop. So I think this turns into that. Um, it's really tough. That's a tough call. All right. So is this a is this a feather deck? I feel like this is feather. Definitely seems like feather. Do we want this land? So let's take a next turn. Four, two, three, four, five. We'll have one left over. Six, 11. Am I mathing this right? Yeah, we're good. Oh, they're playing Naya. Oh, I was really expecting this to be a Jeskai deck. I mean, next turn is going to be kind of good, right? We get to play two 12 uh, 12s. I mean, that's a good blocker. And they're only gonna hit they're only gonna hit us for two. We drew a land anyway. Yep. These are beefy boys. We need Vin Diesel in here voicing these for us. If you don't get that reference, look it up. We also get to activate our Guardian Idol to make a 4-4 if we need to. Yeah, I wonder what they're going to do here. I mean, the Vanguard's a pretty good blocker against the Colossus just because they can pay four life in, uh, you know, to block one instead of taking 12. But yeah, so Feather's pretty good. Feather is pretty, pretty good. I don't think they're going to be attacking. All right, well, that was a garbage draw, right? Let's just draw our Akroma's Memorial.
Then he's gonna block one of them. Wow. I think I would have thrown it. I've thrown a Dreadhorde Ar uh, Arcanist in front of one of them. I don't think you need two Dreadhorde Arcanists here. We're going to stop on our upkeep just in case we need to. So now they can no longer. Oh, well, you know what they say, just draw the cards you want, right? It's pretty good. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. Biscuit Joe, come back. Biscuit, come back. Oh, we were having so much fun. Oh, we got to do our thing. Yeah, I don't think... Uh, Taking 12 was the best play there, because then you just turn off the ability to ever activate Adano Vanguard again. So, all right, let's head to the final boss. All right, final boss. Let's do it. I feel it. You guys feel it too? The 4-0 dream. We just need to go first, right? Game, let us go first. Monte Cruz, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Um, I mean, we're gonna we're gonna keep this. I want them to think about what we're doing over here. I'd be like, what what construct are you playing? All right, all right. It's a merriment deck, okay. So we have eight mana. Okay. I mean, take 10. <laughs> All right, seems good. Pro red. You didn't expect that, did you? Oh, the Iron Giant. I think I think they're trying to do damage to this with a red spell, right? I mean that'll that'll definitely get rid of that. I mean I feel like I I might have gone after the Acroma's memorial. Yeah, we should have we should have taken a draw at the uh, at the other giant there. How much mana do we have? Oh, that's pretty good.
Oh, you play Settle? What? You just settled this, bro? I mean, take action. We actually do anything here. We have a blocker. Comes down. Man, we are potentially going to get got by this uh, Outlaw's Merriment. Let's scry first. Scry first. Draw two. I don't like the fact that we are on the edge of our seats here, right? I think we're dead. We're at one. And we get to gain life now. Oh, this is a nail biter, and I feel like we misplayed. Wow, you have another one. Haste does have haste.
Yeah, we... Oh, no, we didn't misplay earlier. All right, so I thought we misplayed earlier, but we did not. I still think we have misplayed, though. I mean, they can't, they can't have another one, can they? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? This is a crazy game. So we need to draw some cards here. And we're going to have to draw now as opposed to later. This is a cray. I don't even understand how this game got to this point, right? Um, do we? Yeah, I think we do. Let's just draw Golos instead of having to search it out. This is a, this is a crazy game. Well, that was probably the worst draw on our deck. One, two, four. I don't think we have enough. Do we? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Come on, one time. One time. One time. What's it going to be? Oh, this is exciting. This is exciting. Oh, this is not exciting. <laughs> Gain a little bit of life back. You can't have the fourth, uh, right? I mean, I guess you could have the fourth, but. <laughs> this is this is a crazy game. Down to eight.
Golos is pretty good there, right? I don't hate I don't hate that Golos draw. So I think we're just gonna get another Radiant Fountain, gain some more life. So they legitimately exiled four Metalwork Colossuses successfully with three settles and an Elspeth Conqueror's death. This should never have happened at all. All right, another merriment. All right, we're going to draw this game. Oh, we're so greedy, right? You're definitely giving us three cards here. Definitely giving us three cards. All right, we're not... We're not casting a Star of Extinction. Oh, man, we were down to one life. Does they have another Platern Cleansing? I mean, you're not, you don't gain, you don't gain any life here, so. You don't gain any life. Remember, this started with like a turn, for what, five attack for 10 with an Acroma's Memorial in play. And I really don't want to show him this buried ruin. They're going to. Okay. Anger of the gods. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So, no, let's just... Let's just be done with it. Let's just be done with it. <laughs> that was a crazy game. Oh, we deserved, we probably deserved to lose that at some point for the way we played. But I'll tell you my confusion though was, or not confusion, but I, the three one has trample. Obviously it would have trampled over. Um, but then when we actually activated it, the turn we thought we were going to die, we, I forgot that it was going to be a four, four uh, instead of just a two, two. So I thought the trample was actually going to kill us, but it didn't because it was a four, four. So that actually put us at one. So sick game. Ooh, let's talk about this deck. All right, everybody, welcome back to the wrap up. And this deck crushed it. We went two and one with the original build. And then with our uh, edited build, we went four and oh. And yeah, I'm super stoked that we went up to the four combustible gear hulks because we tried to do unfair things. Um, I actually am kind of happy that we actually never got around to casting Ulamog. Um, not going to lie, we did try to hit Ulamog a few times with the Golos. It just didn't work out that way. But uh, nonetheless, we still actually got in there. That last game we played was crazy. That game was like 16 or 17 minutes. And um, we got down to one life. And at the, by the end of the game, we, uh, you know, we were just like struggling to, I mean, just piece things together because they had, they had managed to exile all of our Metalwork Colossuses, which... It would have been fine had they actually killed our metalwork colossuses so we could bring them back from the graveyard but since they actually exiled them it was a lot harder for us to actually find a, a win so we started digging with uh you know getting golos into play we were trying to get ulamog uh, at any point i feel like if we would have drawn ulamog the game just would have ended um and then the combustible gear hulks 
they were they were great uh so again i think the mana base in this deck is super important uh, i don't necessarily i don't think we need all of the red mana that we have in this deck but i do like the fact that they all that all of them tap for colorless anyway so i, I don't really feel like there's anything wrong with playing them so it's gonna it's gonna give us more access to red mana uh, especially you know the red mana that doesn't cost us life but again we need that those spire of industries in here just in case so um but yeah uh i like playing with golos golos is fun um i really 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 like the combination of a chroma's memorial and metalwork colossus you can just seriously not even play metalwork colossus you could have you could not have metalwork colossus in play uh, have a couple of them in your hand slam down a chroma's memorial and then just drop two or three metalwork colossuses on your opponent and just swing in for the win in one turn so uh, I do like that. That's something that we could have considered playing. Maybe a, a way to search out more artifacts. Um, I would have had to actually go through and search for that uh, in our collection to see what we could have really done in regards to that. Uh, but I mean, we did have the Adventures Fair um, and we did have Golos, you know, to potentially put them into play for free if we hit them. So, uh, but yeah, uh, tell me what you thought about this deck. This deck, this deck in my opinion, is super fun, super sweet, super expensive to build. There are a ton of rares and mythics in this deck. Rare, mythic, 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 mythic. So, uh, yeah. So, again, basically everything everything in this pile is a mythic. Everything, everything else is a rare. Well, obviously there's some uncommons. But, yeah, so a ton of mythics in this deck. That is, what, 14 mythics? So uh, if you have it, play it. If not, you know, save up for it. But yeah, if you if you uh, enjoyed this deck, please let me know. Uh, if you want to be part of Deck Timber, join the Discord. You know, head down to the Deck Timber channel and submit your list using the pin post. And then again, big, 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 huge, huge, huge shout out to Habeas Porpoise for submitting this deck list. It was a lot of fun, and I'm glad we got to play it. So uh, again. You know, if you like the video, like the channel, like, comment, subscribe, check out all the links down below, the Twitch link, the Discord link, and the Patreon link, anything you can do to help support the channel. It helps, and you have so many free options. Um, yeah, that's all I ask. But with that being said, everybody, please stay safe, and we will see you next time. Remember, this channel would not exist without such amazing viewers and subscribers. Thank you so much for interacting with the channel and helping grow the community. And a very big special thank you to the Patreons listed here for supporting the channel.